All right, today we're gonna to be doing a kitchen backsplash installation or how to install a kitchen backsplash. Let's get into it. Mechanics for non-mechanics. Before. And. All right, Elizabeth, what are we doing here? Hi, okay, so. We just prepped the counters last night with paper. Any paper will do. This is just like kids craft paper. So it's just regular paper, but it's on a roll. So it makes it easier to spread out. Okay, so we took the paper and we put it all on the counters just to protect the counters that we just got. And then we took blue painter's tape and just taped it so that there's a straight line so that we can still see this grout so that we can put the backsplash right up to it. Mm -hmm. We took off the outlet covers so that we can get the backsplash around the outlets and it's not going to look real choppy. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four things. First thing we have is non-sanded grout. We got a really light color because this is our backsplash. So we have 33 square feet in our kitchen. Well, we have 29 square feet, but what you have to do is get 10% over whatever your measurements are, just for cuts and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we had 29 square feet, we added like 2.9, so we just run it up to 33. So each of these boxes has 10 pieces and it covers 7.4 square feet. We got 45, we rounded up just to be safe, because we can always take it back because they're sold individually, so we can take it back if we don't use all of them. So, first thing we're gonna do is put thin set on the wall, and that just makes the tile stick to the wall. So after we put the thin set on, then we're going to lay our backsplash down. So we'll lay this on the wall, and then we'll put spacers in between so that they're all the same distance apart. These are the spacers. So here's the next one. You see how it fits together nicely. But we don't want it to be like that. So the spacers will make sure that they're exactly the same distance apart. So we'll just put spacers in between all of them. Okay. So and our grout, we chose to get non-sanded grout. So the only difference between sanded and non-sanded grout is that it just doesn't have a texture, so it's a smooth texture. We wanted a smooth texture because look how smooth our backsplash is. We didn't want it to look crappy in between. Also, this is a kitchen and I cook with tomato sauce. So if tomato sauce splatters on the backsplash, it would be easier to wipe it off if it was a smooth finish versus sanded grout and get inside the grout. So we did non-sanded grout. One thing about the sanded grout is that the sanded grout makes it stick a little better, but it doesn't matter. It's not a huge heavy tile, so we don't need to worry about that. So then, so the first thing we're gonna do is put the thin set on, then put our backsplash with the spacers on, and then once it dries, we finish with the grout. Okay. And then we seal it. Let's do it. And before, I'm just gonna go out for the dry for Oh, we gotta pop these out. We're letting the outlets hang around the wall so that we can put the backsplash around it. So we turned off the power before we took the outlets out, just so we don't get electrocuted. And a good way to test that is to plug in a small lamp or even your phone to see if it's charging. Plug it in and then have one person wait in here and the other person go in the, um, wherever the breaker is and shut them off. This tile saw needs water flowing through it, so I just filled this up uh, to this point right here with water. So you're going to see water working through, <clears throat> working throughout this process as we cut. Put, put a little barricade behind it because it is going to splash some water um, that, uh, behind it as well. Make sure you're wearing your safety goggles. 
got to make sure it's square here, square there. Hold this up against here a second. But that's the way it is. You know, everything's even down here, up there. You'll cut some pieces to fit in. Let's use this one measure. Twelve. So that'll be one. I just got the jig set up, so I just want to cut as many as I can, you know, without throwing it off because it's set just right, you know? Okay. Five, six, seven. We need seven. So let's go cut seven of these out. I think I really will cut the tops too. This one I can just mud it and keep moving. We're gonna take the extra time to cut the top. Where's the little spacers you bought? Here. Let's lay a couple of them out there and see how this goes. <laughs> Anything to keep in mind as you're applying this? Or just a nice thick coat on there? That's all I just apply. Maybe it's my imagination. I don't normally use this, but... You just keep this at a 45 as best as you can. If I asked you to dance, would you say yes? I could go without you. I just don't want to. Just saw the video and it looks like your dad did it all as you watched. 
Well, you saw me wiping the dirt off of them. Yeah, you did, did you not see that? Did you not see me with the toothpick and the yeah. kitchen? <laughs> that was all me. So here's what we got so far. This is what we, I say we, but really my dad knocked out on day one. He's going to come back tomorrow and finish up that wall right there. And put some grout on that all around there. And then he'll come up and put grout on that the next day. You got to give it, you have to give it say 24 hours or so before you put the grout on. Coming along. Good job, Adam. Oh. Came across here. And now, what are we gonna do next? We're gonna grout it. We're gonna, how long do you usually let it sit for? About 24 hours, you said? Tomorrow, 24 hours, yeah. Okay. And then we'll come back tomorrow and put grout on. Right. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and grab that. And we'll fill three. So we're filling up three buckets that we're gonna be using as we wash as we wash this down. So you'll see it in action. But filling three buckets halfway and then a fourth that my dad's gonna be using with the trowel. He'll now go ahead and uh, open that box up. Get a knife, cut the box. It's probably in a plastic bag. And as I turn, you're going to pour it in there. Good opening. So that stuff pours out. Yeah, rip it, rip it. The whole top. So we're going to go through the whole thing. You're going to be pouring it in there. So I mix Just it. steadily. Steadily. Yes, nice steady. Yeah. put a bead of caulk on the bottom because this stuff will crack and separate mm -hmm. 
That's why I said you got to get some of that stretchy caulk. Oh yeah, that's right. And basically what I'm doing now is just wiping it off the top so there's less. <laughs> Steph said looks like six in there. <laughs> so there's no. less to clean up, you know? Yeah, maybe if I... I know. Squeeze this out really squeeze tight, okay? So it's almost dry. Mm -hmm. And then just lightly, no pressure, just lightly across the top, okay? See, this is kind of a rough sponge, ah, okay? So it, it won't, it kind of stays on the surface, and that's what you want to do so you don't dig that stuff out, you know? So this will be like the first shot. So I'm just doing the basic kind of light across there get all this heavy stuff, you know? Mm. And now we'll let it, kind of giving it a, f a little bit more of a finish. How do you know when to drench the sponge out? Uh, you rinse it as much as possible, you know. Mm -hmm. It's frequent as, I mean, it gets, it has to get a little dirty, you know. I guess when you sponge it, it'll get a good film on there. So we're going to use this Tile Doctor Spray, Grout Haze Remover, and spray all around the kitchen. So spray all the walls, and then we wait 10 to 20 minutes, and then use a cloth, kind of like this, just like a cleaning dry cloth, and wipe everything off. Then we're going to rinse it with clean water, and then make sure we dry it afterward so that the haze doesn't come back. <laughs> 